On July 1, 2018, for the first time in Europe, an Iranian diplomat was arrested while committing an act of terrorism in Germany. The bomb plot intended to target an annual Iranian opposition rally held in Villepinte, north of Paris, where over 100,000 Iranian dissidents gathered each year. The decision to greenlight this terror attack, which could have been one of the largest terror attacks in Europe's history, traces back to the most senior officials of Iran's regime, according to international news media. What is the story and implications of this foiled terror plot? Iran, December 2017. Nationwide protests engulfed Iran for several days. The Iranian people took to the streets against the religious theocracy in over 142 cities across the country. On January 2018, Iranian regime supreme leader Ali Khamenei said that the opposition People's Mujahideen Organization of Iran PMOI, MEK, were behind these protests. As maha qabl ina amade budan, khode rasanahay monafiqin e'taraf kardan dar hamin ruzha sazmandehi konan beran inone bebinan kasani ro dar dakhil nishan konan, peyda konan, ke bishun kumak konan ta biyan به مردم فراخان بدن فراخان رم اونا دادن شعار نبگرانی بگذارن خب این شعاریه که همه خوشتون میاد با این شعار یه عده رو جذب کنن بعد بیان خودشون وسط اهداف شوم خودشون رو دنبال کنن مردم رو هم دنبال خودشون بکشن هدف این بود Six days after the uprising began, Iranian regime President Hassan Rouhani called the French government to complain about the MEK's activities. The MEK is the cornerstone member of the Paris-based Iranian opposition coalition National Council of Resistance of Iran, NCRI. The Iranian regime considers the MEK as its main enemy and the sole alternative to its rule. After the protests, the mullahs, who feared the overthrow of their regime, initiated a major effort to eliminate the MEK through a terror plot. Ali Shamkhani, chair of the regime's Supreme National Security Council, said at the time that the MEK will be hit from where they don't expect it. Hossein Tayeb, head of the Revolutionary Guards Intelligence Organization, shed light on the revenge that Khamenei is seeking. In recent events, notorious grouplets guided by the nation's main enemy are taking advantage of the people's rightful economic demands to create instability and derail the people's demands. Of course, their measures will not go unanswered and they will receive a slap in the face at the right time, he said on February 11, 2018. From this day forward, the regime launched plans to carry out its largest ever terror plot on European soil with the signatures of Khamenei, Rouhani, Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Sarif, and Intelligence Minister Mahmoud Alavi. The target was the annual Iranian opposition gathering near Paris, where over 100,000 people, along with hundreds of political dignitaries, take part. NCRI President-elect Maryam Rajavi is the keynote speaker at these events. This conference is an event that Zarif describes as a very hostile measure. منافقین متاسفانه از زمانی که در حدود ده سال قبل از فهرست گروه های تروریستی خارج شدن هر ساله مراسمی رو در پاریس برگزار می کنند و این برگزاری این مراسم رو ما یک اقدام بسیار خسمانه از سوی کشورهای غربی علیه جمهوری اسلامی Senior Iranian regime officials allocated all their assets for this terrorist plot, assigned to their Vienna-based diplomat by the name of Asadollah Asadi. Asadi is a career intelligence ministry agent and an expert in explosives. For years he commanded Iraqi agents and terror attacks against the MEK in Iraq. In 2014, he was assigned as the third director of the Iranian regime's embassy in Vienna, and began gathering intelligence about the MEK in Europe. 
Following a year of preparations on June 20, 2018, exactly 10 days prior to the NCRI's 2018 gathering in Villepont near Paris, Asadi was summoned to Tehran and on June 22, he personally transferred the explosive device in his luggage on an Austrian Airbus passenger plane, flight number OS872, to Vienna. The bomb contained 500 grams of TATP explosives with a remote control detonation mechanism. On June 28, just two days prior to the NCRI gathering, Asadi travelled to Luxembourg where he delivered the bomb to two terrorist agents, Nassime Nami and Amir Saudouni, who were missioned to take the package to the gathering site. Asadi was in close contact with these two agents for years and regularly met with them in various European countries, while sending them to Iran for training whenever necessary. What the three did not know this time around was that they were under police surveillance during the bomb delivery from Asadi to the two agents. The two terrorist agents, while transferring the bomb in their vehicle to Paris and the gathering site, were arrested prior to noon on June 29th in Belgium. On the afternoon of the same day, Merdad Arifani, a third terrorist, was arrested at the gathering site in Villepont, just north of Paris. Asadi himself was arrested on the afternoon of the next day, July 1st, in Germany, on his way back to Vienna. He was then extradited to Belgium, where a court in the city of Antwerp is addressing this terrorist dossier. Following Asadi's arrest, the higher official of this terrorist bomb plot, being Iranian regime foreign minister Mohammad Javad Zarif, launched efforts to defuse this political and diplomatic crisis for the regime. However, his contradictory remarks shed further light on his lies. At first, Zarif attempted to display this incident as a false flag operation by the MEK against their own members. Zarif, at the Munich Security Conference, attempted to minimise the terror plot and said the operation was an arbitrary attempt by a rogue agent that wasn't taking orders from his chain of command. It, must, it, it could be a false flag operation, it could have been an entrapment, it could have been a rogue operation, but it's certainly not the work of a government that you should call crazy. However, Zarif had forgotten that in his remarks on November 5, 2018, in the regime's parliament, he denied the theory of any arbitrary measures in Iran's centralised theocracy. We are not a system to act in arbitrary fashion. Can we do anything in this country without reporting it in? he said in his case of defending the 2015 nuclear deal. Le Monde reported on October 2020, citing the Belgium intelligence chief, Jacques Ras, writing to the Belgian federal prosecutor. This attack was provoked and planned by Iran and not a single man initiative by Assadi. According to the Belgian Security Service, Asadi specifically worked for Department 312 of Iran's Ministry of Intelligence and Security, MOIS, which has been designated by the European Union as a terrorist organisation. Die Welt in Germany reported on October 16th that evidence shows the decision regarding this terror attack, which could have been one of the largest planned terror plots in European history, reached the highest levels of the Iranian regime. If we, stale, if we fail to stand up against the evil that is terrorism, if we seek to appease those who would commit such heinous crimes, we would only encourage more attacks, more crimes, and we would become complicit in that evil. Since its foundation, the regime has used terrorist acts directly and through proxies against its adversaries foreign and domestic. This continues today. In Europe alone, in the past few years, Iranian agents have operated and planned lethal attacks across the continent. In Albania, in Austria, the Netherlands, Denmark, Germany, Switzerland, Italy, and I could go on. The regime's terror plot scandal became such a dilemma for the regime that Asadollah Assadi literally threatened the Belgian police. Reuters reported on October 9th, minutes of a March 12th meeting between Assadi and Belgian police seen by Reuters and confirmed as authentic by his lawyer 
show the diplomat initially set out Tehran's long-standing grievances with the MEK's activities in the past. He then warned Belgian authorities that his case was being closely watched by undisclosed groups in Iran and neighbouring countries. Assadi told police that armed groups in Iraq, Lebanon, Yemen and Syria, as well as in Iran, were interested in the outcome of his case and would be watching from the sidelines to see if Belgium would support them or not, according to the minutes. The truth is that Asadollah Assadi is a senior ranking MOIS member working under the cover of a diplomat. Both of his posts as an intelligence official and diplomat indicate that he is part of a military administrative chain of command, making both the MOIS and foreign ministry responsible for his measures. This hierarchy begins with two superiors in both the MOIS and foreign ministry and linked to both ministers directly. These two ministers are under the authority of the regime's president. The Mullah's leader is also the highest official responsible in this regime. Furthermore, the MOIS is specifically and directly under the supervision of Khamenei himself and the foreign minister also reports directly to him. Let, let me speak very briefly about the uh, about the uh, MOIS. Uh, they operate worldwide. <clears throat> excuse me. They use a variety of methods and tactics. They operate undercover as a diplomat, either through uh, official embassy channels or through business organizations. They work very closely with the uh, IRGC and other security agencies. Um, and, but to label them an intelligence agency in the uh, purest sense of the word would be a misnomer. Uh, so in terms of how the MOS operates, uh, basically they, as I mentioned earlier, a terrorist organization. They are the central organization in Iran that deals with intelligence operations. So they are beholding to no one other than the supreme leader. Actually, he was a sort of normality, his presence as a terrorist in the diplomatic ranks of his country. And it confirms that Iran is the number one terrorist state in the world, as I have already said. And the European Union still does not entirely see Iran as a fundamental threat against its citizens. And some of the opponents of the regime who were assassinated in, other, other in the past or were on the assassination hit list were European citizens, and the European Union just didn't react uh, properly. This indicates very well that the appeasement policy, alongside neglecting the regime's terrorist crimes and espionage, have resulted in the Mullahs taking on such unprecedented crimes despite the high risks. Its diplomat terrorists and senior officials count on appeasement on one hand and taking advantage of nuclear talks with the Europeans on the other, providing the regime with a sense of immunity. NCRI President-elect Mariam Rajavi said the following during an online conference on October 22nd regarding the case of Asadullah Assadi. One, European countries must set aside all political considerations in this case. The regime's leaders must be prosecuted and they must face justice. This is a necessary and a preventive measure against terrorism under the name of Islam, which the clerical regime is its central banker and exporter. Two, Khamenei and Rouhani took a great risk by sending a diplomat to carry out the bombing and slaughter. The reason is that they are extremely vulnerable in the face of the people's uprisings. The spread of the resistance's influence and the overthrow of the regime. Three, the clerical regime has become very emboldened over the past 40 years due to the policy of appeasement. To the extent that their diplomat who has been arrested makes threats of more terrorist operations, even from inside prison. Today, the European Union is facing a serious and historic test in the face of terrorism under the banner of Islam. Therefore, 
What is the EU going to do with the epicenter of terrorism? The entire Ministry of Intelligence and the IRGC must be designated as a terrorist entity. Agents of the Intelligence Ministry and the Ghost Force must be prosecuted, brought to justice and expelled. The regime's embassies and their so-called religious and cultural centers must be shut down. These are indispensable to guaranteeing the security of Europe and especially the security of Iranian refugees and dissidents which will bring about the friendship and support of the Iranian people.